Hi, I'm Lavinia Butler, and welcome to Lovering and Company. We have a wonderful show for you today, and my guest is, is the new, well, she's not all that new, but we'll talk about it, the Metro Nashville Juvenile Court Judge, Judge Sophie Brown Crawford. <laughs> We're glad well, to have you with us, Judge Crawford. Thank you, Lavinia, very much for asking me to participate today. I'm glad to be here. Good. And we're going to talk about the juvenile court system and here in Nashville, Tennessee. It's so much been going on in the news about children and about, especially with the state and, and DCS and the problems with children in custody and dying and, and, and just so many problems with children in, in our uh, system. And people think the juvenile court is, is just all bad kids and all of these myths and things. So we want to get down to the truth today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lavinia. I, can I just start by educating some folks yes. that, that yeah. don't deal with us about juvenile court? Yeah, just, okay? just tell us what does, what, what does juvenile court do? What all do you do? I'll certainly <laughs> let you know that. Um, oftentimes, as you said, a lot of folks tend to associate juvenile court with just delinquency and kids that get in trouble. But the truth be known, there's a whole lot more to us than just delinquency. Juvenile court, we, we address parentage cases. We, last year, I think, had about 6,000 kids that when came When you say parenting us. cases, you're talking about cases for parents that are not... Children that are born out of wedlock. Oh, okay. Establishment cases. Okay. Establishing okay. fathers as fathers oh, okay. so that children have the opportunity early on to get to know who both parents are instead oh. of just one because we have identified that establishing parentage and getting involved fathers and having two parents involved hmm. actually reduces uh, delinquency over time. Hmm. So we have the parentage division like I said that last year um, we had about 6,000 kids oh, that had okay. establishment orders on wow. them and, and support set and parenting arrangements made. So that's about a third of our court business. Hmm. And then in addition to that, we have neglect dependency cases where children have either been subjected to neglect or abuse and their parents have been charged with that on the civil side. So okay. they come in front of us so that we can see what kind of services the family may need in order to protect the children in the future. Hmm. And then we have the delinquency. And each one of the divisions serves about one third of our total caseload down here. Oh my word, that never, I never would have thought that. Because I, I guess I'm one of those like the rest that thought the, the last third that you talked about, right. the, the, the delinquency was the all of it. Exactly. But let's talk about the parenting more so. Okay. But let's go back to that because that that's interesting to me because I had no idea you did that. Right. That sounds like something that the state would be doing. Right, <laughs> right. And, and you know, you're exactly right. The state is involved in those cases. When I started down here as a magistrate before my appointment as judge, I started on the parentage dockets. Okay. And those dockets generally start with child support services. We have a local child support servicing agency here in Nashville mm -hmm. that will file petitions on behalf of moms and dads to establish parentage, set support, and establish parenting rights. Because what we have found is if we can get dads involved with more than just weekend visitation, mm -hmm. but even you know more often than just every other weekend, the more involved that, that both parents are, usually the better the scenario for the family is. So it starts with the state filing a petition or an individual can file a petition. So say you had a child or a family member that had a child born out of wedlock or I did, then that person could come down here and file a petition to have parentage established. Hmm. And like I said, that's how it starts, by a petition. And then it okay. gets before a magistrate. Usually there's DNA testing, if they want DNA okay. testing. Okay. And that DNA testing confirms that they're the father. And then we go from there in terms of deciding how actively involved in the life of the child the father's going to be and divide up custody and visitation rights. And oh, my gosh. I just didn't realize that, that you would have so much detail work going on right. in establishing parental, parental right. rights. And, and we have three magistrates that oh, stay busy five days a week doing all just on parentage and support cases. We have a federal 40 grant huh. that helps us in terms of funding those particular dockets. But the reason that's so critical, Lavinia, is because that's our first contact with the family after a child's born a lot of times. So mm -hmm. that's our first opportunity to find out 
what does this family need so that we can keep them from coming back down here on a neglect abuse charge or a child on a delinquency charge. If we can get involved in the family early on and say, what are y'all struggling with right now? What can we help you with? What can we refer you to in terms of resources to help you? Because oftentimes what we see is a case will start in the parentage division. Stress will come to the family in a lot of different ways. They don't know what resources to access. And oftentimes the child ends up being a neglected or abused child, which ends up going before an, one of the magistrates upstairs. I have uh, seven appointed magistrates that assist me. So eight judicial officers full time working wow. on parentage and child support dependency, neglect, and abuse, and delinquency. And a lot of kids that end up on our delinquent dockets have, have also been subject of neglect, dependency, and abuse. Oh, my. So, you know, there's a whole lot more to it just, than a kid just little, going out and yes, committing an just offense. just know you did all of right, that. Right, oh, I, that is Busy work. That is. <laughs> so you do you have um, counselors or, um, or um, what is the, the persons who go out and, and Probation do, officers. Yes. Those, we have 107 are. employees, um, and we also run a contracted detention facility here. Uh, of the 107 employees, we have, and, and I'm very proud of all of our employees, they've done so well with the transition of from judge to me, mm -hmm. and they, they all do wonderful in their jobs, but of the uh, 30 supervised probation officers, I believe we have about 26 in the field mm. and a lot of people don't know Lavinia but we have like probation officers that are that have offices all over the city no we don't didn't know that and see I was appointed <laughs> October the 16th and because I was a magistrate for so long in my division I had probation officers assigned to my division mm. but I hadn't had the opportunity to get out in the field and really get to know all of these employees so I've spent a good bit of my time when I'm not on the bench out in the community trying to meet all of these 107 employees and see where they're housed. They're housed in different housing developments. Mm. Uh, so different uh, low-income housing uh, facilities. We have mm -hmm. probation officers housed actually in. Oh, now that makes it so much so easier have, for the parent and the children to right, get to. They have to come downtown, where about parking. <laughs> right, right. So we're, you know, in, in the probation department, kids that are on supervised probation mm -hmm. uh, last year alone, we had approximately 24,600 and something face-to-face -face contacts between our 26 probation In one year? Wow. 24,000 face-to-face. And in those face-to-face -face contacts, you know, and we have room searches in addition to that. I think we had 400 and something room searches done of, of And when you said room searches, you're talking about go to the home and search the home. Right, of a kid that's of on kid probation. kid that's on probation. Right. To see are they back home. Making sure they're compliant. Right. And things like that. Wow. And in those room searches, we have found guns, we've found cocaine, mm -hmm. we have found all kinds of contraband. Mm -hmm. That And then what we typically will do, we have graduated sanctions, which basically means if you're on probation mm -hmm. and you violate a term of probation, violations, violations can range from curfew violations on up to having contraband. Mm -hmm. Then our probation officers have the discretion of implementing a graduated sanction instead of filing a violation and asking for state custody. And what's a graduated A graduated <laughs> sanction is a list of alternatives to state custody or to detention okay. that the probation staff can use. Public service work could be a graduated sanction. Mm -hmm. Lowering the curfew could be a graduated sanction. Oh, okay. They have okay. a, okay. a number of options so that they can intervene to prevent further court involvement in terms of a violation. We're constantly striving, Lavinia, to to intervene early in order to prevent court action. That's what I was going to say. You have that that whole parental section is just a it's a preventive. It's it's the best known secret. It sure is. My gosh, I just didn't know that was going on mm -hmm. here, and 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 so I, that's why I'm so glad we're doing this show right. that you're on today, so we can let the community know these kind of things mm -hmm. that that are available. It's all about Be education. Because a lot of parents who who are um, a child is born out of wedlock and then you have, you know, other parents, the, the guy or the female want to go and establish parental right. rights and, 
and to be able to take care of their children. Right. That that's one and know that this is where you come. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And when, when I was appointed by the Metro Council in October, one thing that I said I wanted to do was to educate the public on juvenile court because I think oftentimes, like I said, it's just this misconceived we are just about to see. When in reality we don't get to intervene with families too often unless something is filed that brings them to the court. Mm -hmm. But a lot of youth are brought to the court that never appear before the court. Did you know that? No, no. I was going to say, why would that happen? Well, we have we have situations to where, say, a youth has never been charged with anything before, okay. and they pick up uh, uh, loitering during school hours. Mm -hmm. We have an MSAC program, which is a Metro School Attendance Center program that actually our mayor started several years ago and asked us to take on. Great project that we're working on here because now the police officers can take these youth directly to the Metro Student Attendance Center in order to see why they're at school, how many days they've been missing, and work directly with the school system to try to avoid a truancy petition being filed. So it's an opportunity for us to intervene without court action. Mm -hmm. And we do that very frequently too. It's been a great project that we've had. So. Oh, this is wonderful. I, I won't, we're going to talk about your other two, and I'm just, I'm a big prevention, prevention Me kind too. of person. I, Me too, and, absolutely. And health and in, in, in their welfare, just period. Right. And so, so that, that parental section is just everything. It is. Yes. It is. Well, now, now, what, now the other section you were talking about. Dependency, neglect, and yes. abuse. Generally, those cases start by the Department of Children's Services okay. getting a referral. They'll go out. Is that Metro or state? That state. State. The okay. State Tennessee okay. Department of Children's Services. Okay. They'll get a referral that there's neglect or abuse. And then they have cert a certain time within which to respond to that referral. Now, the State Tennessee Department of Children's Services is totally separate from juvenile court. Right. But when they go out and investigate their referral, if they find that there is a, a petition that's warranted, that they need to bring it to the attention of the court, then they will file, their legal department will file a petition to get that family before the court. And then the court has the opportunity at that point to determine what's going on in the family. Is this a case to where the child can remain safely in the home and we just provide services through the Department of Children's Services? Or is this egregious enough to where the child needs to come out of the home and, and placed in state custody while the family works a permanency oh, okay. plan to see whether or not the family can successfully be reunited. Our goal generally is when it's safe to, re to reunite families and children mm -hmm. whenever possible. But there are certain cases at times to where there's severe abuse involved or something like that to where it's not safe and we, we simply can't reunite. And those cases generally will result in the termination of the parents' rights and freedom for that child to be adopted. Yes. So you have everything from neglect to <laughs> severe abuse wow. on the neglect dependency abuse docket. Wow. And gosh. And I, that's a part of that 24,000 that you saw came before you last year. Uh, the 24,000 was actually face-to-face -face con uh, Contact. contacts for kids that have been placed on supervised probation, which is totally separate oh my. from the neglect dependency abuse petitions that are filed. And we have an intake division here that's responsible for doing a lot of the paperwork that brings those kids before the court. So. Oh that's a very, very busy division that we have oh. to, all the divisions of the court. That's what I was going to say. We don't say. have people twiddling their thumbs <laughs> down here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not a moment's break. There's not. I said, no wonder I saw them barely eating at their desk and take a lunch that's break. True. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But the good thing about our employees is we have a lot of very passionate employees. You wouldn't be in this business if you weren't. That's true. The pay certainly is not such that they're doing it for that reason. They're doing it because they have a passion for families and children. That's true. And that, now that last one third, uh, I think we kind of touched on that. Right, that's too. the delinquency. The delinquency part. We yeah. have parentage, we have neglect dependency abuse, and then we have delinquency. Um, and then we also have other cases, uh, Lavinia, like my role as the, the judge. I'm appointed by the council uh, because she retired before her term was right, up. Judge Green. Judge Green. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful role model for me she was. Um, but anyway, so I'm finishing that term. 
not oh, being okay. appointed, okay. but I'm appointed to an elected position. Basically, it'll be I'll be up for election. But my job is to hear all appeals from the magistrates, the seven magistrates. Mm -hmm. So once the magistrate finishes hearing a case, mm -hmm. it's appealed to me. Oh, okay. If there's an appeal filed, so I hear those appeals, and then I hear terminations of parental rights cases which is basically if a child has lingered in foster care too long and the parents have not done what they needed to do. How long is too long? Usually 14 out of the last 22 months. Okay. In other words, if the child's been in custody, to me, any, any length of time is too long, but the mm -hmm. state law says okay. that if a child is in, in state custody in foster care for so many months out of the last 22 months, I believe it's 14, mm -hmm. then the state has to file a petition to terminate the parent's rights mm. unless the court finds a compelling reason not to. Mm. So of those cases, I also hear the, the termination of parental rights cases. Mm. And I also hear cases involving transfers of delinquents to the, to the adult system. Mm. So depending on the charge, if the state seeks transfer, then I have to determine whether or not there's probable cause to transfer those youth to the adult system. Now, in transferring by youth to an adult system, system. Is, it, is it age or is it other factors? It, it's a whole list of factors oh, okay. that we look at. Okay. We look at the record of the child. So a child under 18 could be transferred, transferred to, adult. to the adult system. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We have transferred youth depends since on, I've been on here. on the case, there, case right. by case. It depends mm -hmm. on the offense. It depends on the record of the youth. Mm -hmm. It depends on whether or not we've exhausted efforts here in juvenile court. Mm -hmm. Because our goal here, a lot of people believe if a child commits an offense, they're charged with the offense, if they're found guilty, they go to jail or DCS custody and we're mm -hmm. done. Right. So much more. <laughs> that is what, what everybody thinks. That's okay, the that's general. It. Right, because <laughs> if, you, if you're not involved with juvenile court, there's no reason for you to really know no, all the intricacies of juvenile court. <laughs> But that's not really how it happens. Mm -hmm. What happens is if a child is charged with a delinquent offense, um, the state will file or someone will file a petition to get it before the court. Mm -hmm. If it's not one of those diverted cases or a case that goes to our MSAC program or, or somehow is not diverted and it becomes before the court, um, then the court will make a determination as to whether or not the child needs to, to just get public service or something along those lines, or whether or not the child needs to be placed on supervised probation mm -hmm. with one of those probation officers that's in our community that's mm -hmm. an employee of right. the court, or whether or not the child needs to be committed to the Tennessee Department of Children's Services. Okay. Our detention facility here houses 48 youth. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're running around 27 to 28. It's a temporary holding facility. That's what I was going to say. They're only there a short period of time. Until they have a detention hearing. Oh, okay. If it's, a, if it's a detainable charge, then when the child is brought in, they're detained, and they're given a detention hearing within a certain amount of time. And then after the detention hearing, they're placed in a settlement docket to determine if the case can be resolved or needs to go to trial. Once it goes to trial, then the court determines whether or not, uh, if the child is adjudicated, guilty, mm -hmm. whether or not the child goes on probation or is placed in state custody or the like. If the child's placed in state custody, a lot of folks think that we can say to DCS, put this child in this facility, and we can't. Mm -hmm. The department has the authority to make the decision about what level placement that child's put in. So, secured versus state, non secured not, not, right, DCS state, mm -hmm. right. Now, once a child is placed in state custody, that child will come back before us within 60 days mm -hmm. for a hearing. And the purpose of that hearing is for us to determine if it's an appropriate placement. So even though I can't say, put this child in a youth development center, which is a level four secure placement, I can say if they come back in front of me and this child, say, was committed for an ag robbery and they put this child in a group home, I can say this is not an appropriate placement. And then if they don't move the child, they run the risk of losing funding for that child. Mm. So we do okay. have some discretion to say it's appropriate or it's not appropriate. Okay. And then when that youth comes in front of me, the whole purpose of that hearing is to have a permanency hearing to determine what conditions led this child to having to come out of the home.
And those are some, those were some of my favorite hearings uh -huh. because the child doesn't have any charges hanging over their head, mm -hmm. okay. and I can look at that child and say, "Okay, let's just talk here." Oh, that's good. What yeah. led you here? Mm -hmm. What can we do to help the family while you're in state custody? Okay. Now, and, and big breakthrough with some kids. Mm -hmm. Some kids will say, "You know, gangs in the neighborhood." Mm -hmm. You know those kinds of things. So that gives us the true opportunity to make a difference in the life of kids. That's good. Oh, that is wonderful. My gosh, dude, all of these things you do. How long have you been here? I've been here 10 years, and I love it. And, and love in this capacity as judge. Since October 16th. Oh, not, not I was a magistrate here. before that. Oh, my gosh. Since October. Yes, <laughs> yes. And see, the, the, the other distinction, and, and this is why I've had a true appreciation for Judge Green, Lavinia, because as, as a magistrate, you are nonstop busy all the time. Yes. But Judge Green always said, you all just do your jobs as judiciary, mm -hmm. and I'll handle my job. Mm -hmm. And her job is judicial. Right. But in addition to that, it's managing the 107 employees and, and a grant. That's what a grant, I was going to ask you. You know, all of those employees and the, and the detention the whole, center. And the detention center, the whole... The, the whole right. program. So my yes. four magistrates, when I came on board, I said, I'm not quite as nice as Judge Green, because guess what? Y'all are going to help me here. <laughs> but they've all been wonderful and very supportive and helpful. And, and I think our eager. Months, it sounds like you've been here, been working in this a long oh, time. Well, thank That's you. Like, I gosh, appreciate you've that. so much. You're it's, too nice. It's, it's the whole program is sound. My gosh, I, I, the preventive, I can't keep going back. I can't help but keep going back to the preventive but part. But that's what's so because important. That, that's, that's my thing is preventive, it's trying to prevent something Absolutely. from getting to where you have to go before the judge right. and do all these things. And that, right. that, that is the most. And you, the fact that you are out in the community, mm -hmm. when you're not on the bench, you're out in the community finding out the needs and hearing yes. and listening and, and meeting and people and stuff. That, that's different. You know, we had over, if my memory serves me correct, because we just met last week, I think we had over 3,000 kids that were diverted from the system mm -hmm. just on the services that we provide here. To see that, no, that's and of wonderful. course, we have collaboratives with the police department, the school system, and they work together with us. I can't say enough about all of our collaboratives to try to get in the school systems and, and find out what's going on. That's wonderful. Well, now tell us one thing about you, Judge Crawford. <laughs> that, that, what, are you from Nashville? Where are you from? I'm from Nashville. No, I'm I native, am. no doubt. I, am. I grew up in Franklin, Tennessee. They said, they said, well, I'm a native too. They said we're a ram. That's right. That's right. I have been married. I think we talked about this beforehand. I've been married for 20, he's going to kill me, 27, almost 28 years. Okay. Husband Jay Crawford, two daughters, uh, Taylor Crawford, age 20, and Jenny Crawford, age 13. And see, mother, wife, judge, but let me and, tell and you, community activist. My, two, my daughters active. are total opposites. Oh. And that has been a true blessing for me because they're, they're totally opposite. So that's, I've been able to bring that to the bench in terms of saying, hmm. okay, so this child acts this way, this child acts. And, That's good. And, you know, bringing that personal experience. And I'm also an active member of Christ Church Nashville. Very good. Which I have to, I have to tell you about Christ Church Nashville because they have been an integral part of where I am today and who I am today. That's wonderful. Great church. Uh, well, you have to right, rely on your faith. I do. Yes, yes, I do. Yes. yes. And making decisions and things. This yes. is absolutely great. But isn't it, so you work, you also, I know you have a, Criminal, a juvenile court uh, clerk? Yes, David that, Smith. Yeah, that works with... Wonderful man. That, that He's totally separate him. from the court. He's an elected official. Oh, okay. So that that's what I want to make sure people yes. understand, too. That part is separate. Well, what does It's it separate, but it's very important in terms of us being able to work together because he's the one that controls all of the files that are brought oh, before the court. Oh, okay. So okay. anytime okay. a file is opened, David Smith's office is responsible for the total management of that file, staffing the courtrooms with clerks that record all the proceedings. Oh, okay. So we work hand in hand. Well, that's good that you explain them. That's what we yes. need to know. What's the difference in the, two, the that office? Right. So they are handling all of the paperwork. Most all of the paperwork, most all the recording. They're an integral part of us being able to do our job, hmm. and he makes it really easy. 
because he's a wonderful clerk. That's good. He's a wonderful clerk. To have all the parts working together. Yes, yes. <laughs> We're definitely a team. Definitely a team. And well, that awesome. was good. And, and it's good to know that, um, that, you know, that our city juvenile system is all intact and, and, you. and you're doing such wonderful good things here. And eager to see what the future holds because I'm convinced that there's so much more that we can do out there. That's nice. And you're helping by letting us educate the public. Seriously, well, that, I really well, appreciate this opportunity. It's my pleasure because that, that's important to me to let people know about things that are going right. on. At, uh, in, and in not be community. scared of juvenile court. Yes, There's nothing exactly. to be scared of yes. here. We're all human. We all want to work together to try to provide for the families of this community mm -hmm. and to keep the community safe. That's right. Safety has to be a factor. That, at all times. Well, thank you so much for thank being you. on the is show today. Thank you. Is our time today. up? Shucks. <laughs> well, well, it is about up, and I, I know well, I know I have to uh, um, do some other things, but yes. you have to get back to, to, to the bench. <laughs> right, right. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Well, thanks a bunch, and thank you for watching Leverick and Company, and we'll see we'll see you at nine thirty on Saturday mornings, and and every Saturday and. I just love being on this show Thank with you. Thank you very much. You do a great job. See you next time.